Central Picks 11 is your local election headquarters. And this morning we do continue round two of meeting with the candidates for New York City mayor. And today we're talking with Sean Donovan. In the Obama administration, he was director of the Office of Management and Budget. Before that, he was secretary of Housing and Urban Development, also under President Obama. On the local level here in New York City, he's the former secretary of the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development. And Mr. Donovan is joining us right now with more. So good morning to you. Happy Friday. Good to see you again. Great to see you. Thanks for having me back. So let's get into it, uh, Mr. Donovan. The most recent poll out shows Andrew Yang at the top of the pack with you falling somewhere in the middle, right? Likely 6% of Democratic voters saying they plan to vote for you so far. There are the numbers. 26% remain undecided. That is a big number. How do you plan to lure those people over to you? Well, Dan, we know that New Yorkers are just really starting to focus in on this election. Uh, they've been struggling so much through this pandemic, trying to stay in their homes, afford the rent, put food on the table. And we know that so many are still undecided and just focusing in. What I'm encouraged about is I'm hearing all across the five boroughs that they're really looking for someone who's gonna help us get out of this crisis. And no one has led through crisis in the way that I have whether it's being housing commissioner in the wake of 9-11, being housing secretary in the midst of the worst housing crisis of our lifetimes. You know, when Sandy hit New York, President Obama asked me to lead the entire federal recovery effort. And then he asked me to lead the $4 trillion federal budget and work side by side with Dr. Fauci, making sure Ebola and then Zika didn't become pandemics that cost tens of thousands of our neighbors their lives. So I really do think I'm unique in this race, in my ability to lead the city back. And that's what I'm communicating with, with voters okay. about all over the city. And I'm getting a really good response. And I think you'll see as folks start to focus in, I'm going to lead the pack and we'll become the next mayor and help this city not just repair and rebuild, but reimagine the city as a city that works for everyone because too many New Yorkers are struggling right now. Mm -hmm. Sean, you talk about being unique. Um, some critics saying that there is a uniqueness to the funding that you are able to uh, be able to get your hands on. You have able, been able to qualify for the uh, public funding. Uh, be, what, 12 candidates have qualified for that so far, over a dozen of them. Two million of the 2.06 million raised came from an entity called New Start NYC, which we believe is funded by your father. Does that a violation of the spirit of the funding rules? Well, I was gratified that the CFB confirmed yesterday exactly what I've been saying, which is we are following the law. We have the most progressive campaign finance system in New York where small donors can make a big difference and, and really make sure that we have a, a campaign that is getting to every New Yorker and talking to every New Yorker. So I was gratified by that decision. And let's be clear, there are dozens of these groups supporting many different candidates. What I'm focused on is how I can make a difference in the lives of New Yorkers. That's what I was out talking to New Yorkers about on a five borough food tour yeah. this week. I'm gonna be in the Bronx today talking about the desperate need for affordable housing. That's what New Yorkers are focused on, not not PACs, but they're focused on plans. And I have the biggest, boldest plans for the future of this city. You know, I want to talk more about, you mentioned some of those groups, right? And one of those groups is the LGBTQ group. Your opponent, Andrew Yang, losing the endorsement of the LGBT Stonewall Democratic Club to controller Scott Stringer following an interview with members that some describe, I don't know if you saw it, as tone deaf, off-putting, offensive. I want to get your reaction to the comments made and then ask you, how would you tackle issues facing so many LGBTQ New Yorkers? Well, clearly what we've seen, Dan, is that we have uh, some candidates in this race that don't have the experience in New York, don't have experience leading through crisis. And New Yorkers believe this isn't the time for a rookie as mayor. And specifically on these issues, there's no one in the race that's led in the way that I have. I was the first cabinet secretary in history to endorse marriage equality. I led the way on ensuring that all members of the LGBTQIA plus community were protected. And uh, in particular, you know, what's heartbreaking to me is as many as half of our homeless youth are LGBTQ. And I led the way starting 30 years ago in making sure that I was solving homelessness as President Obama's housing secretary. I led the strategy that dramatically reduced homelessness around this country, including youth homelessness. And we can do that here in more than 80 cities and states. Yeah. We actually ended veteran homelessness, not reduced it. 
And this is a solvable problem. You were just talking about what folks are experiencing on our subways and our streets around the city. Uh, we have more homeless people today than we have since the depression. And I'm really the only candidate in this race who's been able to solve this problem here in the city and on a national level. Mm -hmm. And that's what New Yorkers are looking for. Not a rookie as mayor, they're looking for someone who's actually been tested in crisis and knows that we can create the solutions to make New York City work for everyone. I want to ask you about this. This week, as you well know, a jury found former Minneapolis officer Derek Chauvin guilty of murdering George Floyd. You released a statement that said, in part, I'm going to read it here, I recommit to doing the hard work of democracy to uplift others and ensure that every American can live a life in this country safely and with dignity. Black lives matter. So I ask you, what needs to be done to stop black men from dying at the hands of police and really to end systemic racism? Well, Betty, uh, I'm so glad you asked this because everything that happened this week, the important step forward we took won't bring George Floyd back. And we have to commit, as I said, to ensuring there are no more George Floyds. There are no more Breonna Taylors. There are no more Eric Garners. And I've been working for 30 years making sure that I put equity, particularly for black communities at the forefront of the work that I did. In fact, 30 years ago this year, I retraced the route of the Freedom Rides as a student and met John Lewis for the first time. He inspired me to ensure that all the work we were doing really made sure that black pe people in this city and this country, no matter what your skin color, no matter what you look like, who you love, that you can find decent housing and you can find opportunity. And that's why I put it at the center of my campaign. Uh, I propose that we have the first ever chief equity officer in the history of this city reporting directly to me as mayor, making sure that every issue we look at as an issue of equity. That's why I've proposed equity bonds, which would do more than any other candidate has proposed to attack the racial wealth gap. You know, the typical black family has one tenth the wealth yeah. of the typical white family, um, the typical Latino family, one eighth. That has to end. My equity bonds would ensure every child born in the city would get a thousand dollars placed in an account and every year until they graduate high school up to another two thousand dollars so think about this a child born into poverty in new york would graduate high school with almost fifty thousand dollars in an account to go to college to start a business to buy a home to fundamentally change the equation so they could find opportunity in this city. Sean, Those we are simply proposals are the big bold ideas I yeah. put forward in this campaign. We're simply at a time here, Sean. Yes or no, would you get rid of qualified immunity for police officers? That's a big part of this reform. Would you? Uh, I definitely believe that is a piece of what we need to do. Okay. Sean All Donovan, right. thank you very much for your time and we'll continue to chat with you up to the primary day, okay? Good thank to you. see you, Sean. Thank you. Eddie, Dan, great to be with you. Thank you.